Today, I'm going to be breaking down the three things that may be destroying your faith from the inside out. Stay tuned for the last one because it's something often people don't think about. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Isaac David, and this is The Daily Disciple, where I help you follow Jesus daily. If you're new to the channel, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. A huge shout out to all my patrons on Patreon. It is because of you guys that I can continue to make these videos. You help this ministry keep going and growing. If you want to partner with me on Patreon, head to the link in my bio, patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple. Now onto the video. The first thing that may be destroying your faith is porn. Over the last couple of years, I've received hundreds of messages from guys who are either addicted to porn or struggling with it greatly. If you're someone who doesn't struggle with pornography, don't tune out just yet because I have something I want to tell you in a minute. Not only does our culture normalize the consistent use of pornography, it also glorifies it. It's natural, fun, anxiety relieving, and overall nothing to be ashamed of. At least that's what we're told. But for you, friend, I don't want you to be lulled into the false idea that pornography is harmless. Not only does it support the extortion of people for people's viewing pleasure, but it also does tremendous damage to our souls. Most likely, this isn't the first time that you've heard somebody talk about the dangers of pornography in our Christian walk, and maybe you've even seen some of my other videos about pornography. Take this as a wake-up call to get serious about breaking free. The truth is, is some people aren't even struggling with pornography. They're just giving in. It's part of their lifestyle, but guys, we can't can't have two masters. We are either serving pornography or we are serving Christ. We are being discipled by pornography or we are being discipled by Christ. Pornography is teaching you that humans are mere property and that sexual pleasure should be pursued at all costs. But what if it's the cost of your soul? Love is replaced with violence and intimacy for perversion. Stop letting porn disciple you. 1 Peter 2 11, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which weigh war against your soul. Decide today to give your life over to a new master. And if you want to get serious about breaking free, hit the link to watch my other video about breaking free from pornography step by step. For those of you who don't feel like you struggle with pornography, I want you to evaluate the sexualized content that you're taking in on a day-to-day -day basis. We may feel like we're free from the bondage of sexual sin, but are allowing muted forms of sexual immorality into our view every single day. If you take a little bit of an evaluation of your life and find out that this is true, I would recommend and taking a step back from social media, treat it as an over-sexualization detox. When you come back, I want you to ask yourself this one question. Now, I admit this is kind of cheesy and cliche in a way, but it is effective. Would you be comfortable with Jesus watching this with you? If not, why not? Remember, God is omnipresent, so he's with you. Maybe not in physical form, but he is there. Take this as an opportunity to reevaluate the sexually charged content that you may be taking in on a daily basis. The second thing that may be destroying our faith from the inside out is hurry and hustle culture. Last year during the pandemic, I was given some time off work and I was set on this idea that I was going to use this time as productively as I could. It was my goal to write and shoot a whole bunch of videos and content for the coming weeks. Every moment I spent on thinking, what's next? What do I need to do next? How do, can I be productive? What should I, you know, it was just so in my head. Instead of my eyes being transfixed on Jesus, my heart was actually focused on this fear that I would never measure up and that my work was giving me my worth. The fear of missing out, the fear of being left behind, the fear of not measuring up to our peers and being successful. These fears drive our disordered priorities. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. There's nothing wrong with working hard and productivity makes me happy, but it's no longer my goal to find my worth in my productivity or my hurry. I want my productivity and creativity to flow out of the love that God already has for me, not as a means to prove something or garner his love. Now I admit this is an ongoing journey. I'm still far from where I want to be in this area. But if we continue to let hurry rule our lives, it will destroy our faith brick by brick. The third thing that may be destroying your faith from the inside out is isolation. Now I consider myself an introvert and that's part of the reason that being isolated has never really concerned me. I like being alone. I find a lot of enjoyment in just spending time by myself. However, over the last year, I've been finding myself using this as an excuse to avoid essential moments of connection. In our individualistic society, working your life out on your own is seen as a virtue, but in God's world, it's a consequence of letting our sin and fear rule over us. 
In evaluating my motivations on why I wanted to be isolated, it really came down to I didn't want to be known. I, I didn't want to share my life because I was scared of being judged. It takes vulnerability to be known because without being real, we can't relate. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that finding community is super easy. It is not. It is challenging and feeling comfortable enough to share your life in a vulnerable way takes time. Sometimes I find myself being too guarded and then other times I feel regretful because I feel like I overshared. It's hard to gauge exactly how much we should share and how quickly, but I guess our goal is to become the type of person that people want to connect with and that they feel comfortable connecting with and sharing with. In my experience, at the core of this are two characteristics, curiosity and compassion. Childlike curiosity coaxes the person to share more and compassion shows them that it's a safe place to share their life, that you're not going anywhere, that you want to walk with them, and you're not going to judge them from the sidelines. As you walk out of isolation into community, realize that it will not be perfect, not even close. You're going to encounter some weirdos and some whack jobs, but it's okay because you're one of them. Also, realize that you're going to encounter some of the greatest growth that you've ever experienced, something that's not possible on your own. That's part of God's good design. Embrace it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I love making these videos for you. If you found this video helpful, feel free to give it a like down below and subscribe, like I said before, um, because I'm putting out new videos all the time. A huge thank you again to everyone on Patreon. Um, it's my goal to go full-time one day, and when we get to 300 patrons, it is happening. We're getting closer and closer every day, so if you want to help me support me and help this ministry get to that goal, um, head to the link in my bio. I will see you guys next time. God bless.